Jaya Shiva Rajaya here from vitalcoaching.com. The topic for this video is respect my joy. <laughs> this is a bit of an open question. I don't have the final solution and the final idea about that, but something is going on in our minds and in the way we relate to each other, which is a little bit strange. It's like um, you, if you have somebody who has a challenging emotion, like sadness, for instance, then you are going to feel empathy for that person, right? You are going to put yourself in the position, in the shoes of that person, and st start to feel that person's sadness, and that's called holding space for that person. And so what you're doing in this process is like going away from whatever state of joy or happiness or whatever other emotion you might have in your field and go and hold space for that uh, person. And so you identify yourself with that person's sadness. You might cry with them and so on. And so I want to just question that or challenge it a little bit. Um, now imagine that you have a situation where there is one person who is really in full joy. They are having this, you know, trance experience, this mystical experience. They are like happy and singing. And then there is this person who is having this very painful and sad experience. And so if those two people come together, very often the agreed uh, telepathic agreement is that you should go and join that person, the one who is sad in their sadness. It means that somehow the sadness has priority in the, in the nurturing <laughs> rather than the joy. Am I getting this right? Have you noticed that? Or is this something that I'm making up and imagining? Uh, it's really an open discussion and open conversation because I, it doesn't make sense to me anymore. When I look at it and imagine that I am in that state of, of high uh, joy and mystical experience in this very positive light state. Why would somebody else's sadness be a priority in my field? Why isn't it the other way around? Okay, if you have, you know, a little bit of a, a hierarchy in emotion, like this is high a vibe, you know, excitement, fire and so on, and this is like sadness or depression. So what what is going to be the winning situation if everybody is joining forces in the joy space or if everybody joined forces in the sad space? And maybe you might join forces in the sad space and then rise together. You know, those are different dynamics and different mechanisms. But I realize that if my truth at a given moment is joy, okay, and that joy offends somebody's someone else's sadness it's it's weird it's a weird thing because that person's sadness might offend my joy you know you can look at it totally the other way around and so if you are you know seeing somebody sad or having a challenging emotion why is it that you have to give up your 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 base of of joy and, and, and happiness. And so this is an open exploration, okay? And lately, I witnessed myself, you know, witnessing a conversation with somebody who is in their, uh, in a sad place, okay? They are in sharing something that is intense, and I don't give up my smile. I keep on, you know, looking at them from a place of joy and happiness and saying, whenever you're ready to join me in my joy, come and, and join me here. And so, what I notice in this process is that it's, it's extremely empowering. It's extremely empowering to, to realize that you don't have to give up your truth in whatever state you are in uh, just to not to offend somebody else's energetic or emotional state. So what tends to happen is that this state of, of sadness is, is a state of vulnerability. Okay, I use the word sadness, but it could be any other... <coughs> what we could call shadow emotion, something that is a challenge, something that is not necessarily too pleasant to be in. So if you are in that state, you know, there is some form of vulnerability, there is some form of sensitivity. And so if you start projecting lots of energy into that space, it's going to rob that person from the, 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 the nurturing or the, the refinement or the, the nectar of that experience. And so this is why the agreed thing is like, you have to slow down, you have to cool down, you cannot just be jumping up and down like a rabbit having a, <laughs> having a good time. But the truth is that it doesn't make sense anymore. It's, it's a little bit crazy that we have this kind of agreement where um, someone's joy 
is going to offend somebody else, right? It's like, think about that. Again, you are in the subway somewhere in London or New York and you're right there and everybody's in their space, you know, tired after work. There is this kind of gray zone in people's minds, like going back home and sense of separation and isolation. Whole energy is not very uplifting, right? Usually when you look at that. You might be in a good state. And so imagine that you start singing right in the subway. You are there. Yeah. Come on, guys. Wake up. Look at me. I'm all happy. People go like, oh, shut up, man. Just, just, just shut up. Just let me be in my, let me be in my sadness. Let me be in my depression state. And you go like, isn't that crazy? It's because there is some form of ownership into that space. There is a sense of control of that energy. So an external energy is going to go and challenge that. But it's, you know, again, it's, it's, a, little bit, it's a little bit weird and, and crazy to imagine that this is the way we, uh, we function with, um, with this kind of agree that somehow the, in, the, in the hierarchy of priorities, um, sadness is prioritized when it's in the, in the, in the interactions between two people. And so, yeah, what do you think about that? Is this something that you observed before? Have you noticed also yourself being in this state where you go like, I have no desire to, to enter into this sadness right now. I can hold space from you, you know, I can, I can respect that emotion, but I'm going to stay in my state of joy. And if my joy offends you or it offends your space, then it's your emotional or your energetic response to, to, that, to that joy. And um, so if your joy and your, your power and your energy is really anchored in your field, you know, and you're in that state of high energy and high vibration, and it's really grounded, you know, it's not just some superficial wave that can be kicked, kicked out any time. It's really a solid state. So nobody's going to rob me from being in that place. I own my joy, my power, my energy, my happiness. You can come with sadness in that field, but I'm not going to let that sadness in. This is my truth. I'm going to defend that state of mind, that state of being. So there can be, you know, again, like defensive. Uh, it can be, um, you know, just a space that you want to, to protect and honor inside of you instead of allowing it to be wiped out and taken into something else that might be a shadow space. What's your experience? I'm really curious about that. It's an idea that has been emerging and slowly, gently, I'm like, uh, I'm going in my field, I'm starting to consciously prioritize my joy. I go like, I prefer giving strength and power to the vibration, high frequency, high energy that I'm feeling in my system. This is my truth, okay? The fact that you are, that somebody else is going through a state of sadness doesn't mean that that has to be my truth. It's not. You might feel that, and I might feel empathy, or I might feel compassion, I might feel sympathy for what you're experiencing, but that doesn't mean that I have to give up the beautiful sunshine space that is blowing <laughs> me open in my heart. Isn't that crazy when you think of it? So did you experience that in the past, and um, what are your thoughts on this? I'm very really curious. Uh, should uh, your, your joy be prioritized, or is, is this like a an agreement in society that we are supposed to give up our place of, of joy and happiness and, and enter into somebody else's uh, shadow, shadow zone. As you can guess, I already have figured out a little bit my answer, but I want to trigger you here a little bit. Um, yeah, give me your answers. Tell me what you think. I love you.